so you might get a little bit of feedback. I turn them off so you don't have to get so close to them. Ready when you are. Okay, uh, call the December meeting of the Cecil Township Planning uh, Commission to order. I have uh, seven of five tonight. Uh, first item on the agenda is approval of minutes from October. So we have a few blanks to fill in on the meeting minutes, so I'm going to make a motion to table the minutes from the October 19th meeting. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion to table from Dave. Got a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we're tabled. All right, uh, review of previous decisions. Jack, is there anything um, from last month's, actually um, two months of, yeah. of Board of Supervisors meetings um, relevant I, to our previous? I believe I forwarded uh, everything to you. Um, Dan, do you remember anything that? Uh, uh, The supervisors did make, and uh, I think we did that at the October meeting. Right. Yeah. Other than that, I, I don't believe there's anything else to go over because we didn't have a meeting last month, obviously. And we made uh, recommendations on in October on the Han Farms consolidation, Alto Piano Phase Six revision, and shallow industrial contractors. Were those all? It'll be those, those all. Um, those were all approved by the board. Okay. And then the, um, what about the Interstate Highway Plan Development Overlay District? We didn't do anything with that because you wanted to wait till the rest of the board was here tonight to discuss that. So I'm prepared to give you an update, get everybody back up to speed again on the uh, zoning ordinance and the uh, that Interstate Highway Development Okay. issue so if we can get through the plans and then we can do that at the end if you'd like that's perfect i just didn't know if they moved forward without our recommendation or not on no that. no no okay just wanted to make sure okay we have nothing on the agenda for old business so we'll get on to the new business then we have application 2023-0037 <coughs> um it's classic I'm sorry? Um, last name is Klaffick. Klaffick? Yeah. Okay. Uh, subdivision number one? Uh, th this was a long time uh, coming. Uh, I believe it started in 2021, and she came in about uh, a few weeks ago with this, asking that <clears throat> uh, the parcel you see in front of you, if you look up on the screen, um, that was the... Nice screen off. <clears throat> Yeah, I apologize. I, the monitors aren't working right now. Um, she is uh, cutting that piece out. Actually, that was uh, these plans were done in 2021, but uh, she never got around to uh, bringing it to the Planning Commission. I believe you guys have the application. Uh, Mrs. Klaffick owns all this property all the way around there, and she's cutting that piece out for her daughter. Zoom in a little bit if you want. And then she also has uh, another lot as well. Well, um, there were two, uh, there were two plans and um, while this is her uh, house down here, um, she she had asked that this be uh, given to to uh, her daughter, so she still owns all of this. Sorry about the feedback. Your daughter has that adjacent property. Um, no, I, well, I believe there was, uh, I guess there was divorce or something, and uh, she's given uh, part of it to uh, 
her daughter and uh, the other two are son-in-law. I guess they already have that house there. On, on the piece that they're cutting out, what's the distance from the closest point to the property line? Just give a distance. Um, I mean, it's within the 40-foot building right. line. So you're talking about the low, the lowest portion. This one, yeah, that, that pit. Um, I'm believing it's uh, 368 feet. We got 339 over there. Did you no, say? I, I think he's looking for the distance here. Yeah, it's probably only it's less than 50 feet. Yeah. Oh, oh, here. I'm sorry. Is but, that but that, yeah. I don't know the distance. Well, it says a 40-foot building line, and it's inside the 40-foot building line, so it's it's less than 40 feet. Mm -hmm. I mean, you definitely couldn't build anything in that little triangle that's being created. I, I don't I don't know the reason for it other than just get access on the other side. Yeah, I have not talked to John about it. Going out, so this was done, like I said, in 2021. Dan, you have a review letter? I, I do. I have a review letter dated December 20th. It looks like it's just administrative as far as the review letter is concerned. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. It is. They're, they're administrative items. Uh, the only thing I just question... Uh, again, if there's been any sewage planning mm -hmm. done on this, um, the the existing septic system is shown on lot three, so that we know the house is served. Uh, the, typically, what they'll require, like on a remnant parcel of 100 acres, is just to put some sort of a note on there regarding, uh, you know, whether whether it be considered undevelopable or are not developable until, until until such time as there's uh, storage information provided. But my note on the plan is this proof of review and approval by the Washington, uh, the Washington County Sewage Council should be contacted to determine what's required. So it's in my letter. If, if, if you want to consider approving this by letter, I don't, I don't know what Mr. Mounts, whether he'll respond to this or not, we'll see. Does that include the two letters that Washington County's already issued? I, I don't know, Jack. What, what letters? They, the County Planning Commission? Yeah. They sent, sent me both letters, uh, and I forwarded them, them on the gateway. I, okay. No problem. I, I probably have them, but that wouldn't... The Planning Commission letters are different than the, uh, than the sewage letter. The sewage council would be different. Despite the oddness of that lot line, she still owns the, the, the property behind it, right? Correct. So she's not, we're not creating something odd. Yeah, you're not cutting her off. Yeah, we're not creating something odd there. It's, she still owns right. the yeah, adjacent so property. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's, I started asking, I was, that was the gears turning. I, was, I think we're okay. Okay, we let her. Yeah, we have nothing from the Sewage Council. The planning, Washington County Planning Commission had no issues with the plan. Okay. You want to table this? I, I can uh, follow up with the Washington County Sewage. Well, I think it's covered in Gateway's letter, so if we approve it contingent upon addressing the items. That's fine. I, I just don't think if he doesn't get if he can get something before the supervisors are meeting, Jack, we could and gets the plan revised. Otherwise, okay, we'll hold it from the supervisors meeting. You mean uh, John Mounts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, she came in out of the blue, didn't didn't call or anything, and, and said, "I need to get this uh, approved." And I started looking at it I'm like this is from 2021. 
and then we went with Liz, and we have another plan, and I think this one was the one that was supposed to be uh, uh, recorded and approved first, but we have another one that um, this is the overall plan. So it's, um, I'd, I'd agree with you. I mean, it's just a matter, I can reach out to John Mount to see if he'll, you know. Well, we did record the first plan. That's done. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is the second one, for right. the, like you say, for the overall. Do we have any more questions? Any motions? I move to approve application number 2023-0037, Clay Patch subdivision uh, number one, uh, contingent upon satisfaction of the items outlined in the Gateway Engineer's letter dated December 20th, 2023. I'll second that motion. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. <clears throat> All right, moving on. Application 2023-0038, Heinrich uh, Subdivision Plan Number 1. Carrie Kreider from KLH. This is basically just a lot line revision between the, the two properties. Um, we addressed all of uh, Dan's comments. If anybody has any questions. <laughs> Questions? Does anybody else? No. no. Date on the gateway letters: December eighteenth. So, so Carrie, you're just subdividing a piece off and giving it to the other property. That's all. Yep. It's really just a lot line revision. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they have addressed all comments that I had, so. I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. Application 2023-0038, Heron Subdivision, plan number one. Um, based on all comments of the December 18th letter from Gateway having been addressed. I second the motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Okay, motion carries. All right, next item on the agenda, application 2023-0039, Amatic Subdivision Plan Number 1. Amatic. Amatic? Thank you. I try. My apologies. Okay. As big as possible here. Yeah, like an 
Gucci trigger finger for my tag. <laughs> <laughs> like hit or miss. There we go. Um, I'll just leave it at that. That's it, yep. You want me to go ahead, Dan? Yes. On the matter? Yeah. Well, yeah. It's not because we have a planning commission with the trigger. Okay. <laughs> so the plan is to <laughs> subdivide uh, this parcel off of intersection of three roads, um, King Road, um, Rising Road, Rising Road and, and Prothio Road. Prothio, no, uh, Grange yeah. Road. Prothio is up on top. Grange comes down okay. here and Rising. Yeah. And okay. I thought he was just throwing a fourth road in there for fun. Um, Grange, Pro okay. So there's the, the proposed subdivision line. Um, existing house here, existing house here, and existing trailers here. There are currently four occupied mobile homes on that property. Um, so we have a note on here that once the people move out of these mobile homes, they can no longer be rented can't be occupied until sewage facilities are met for those. Are there still four on there? Four now? Okay. Because there's already been a couple. Okay. not creating any new sewage facilities. And you said there is a note on your plans to not have any new occupants until, big I note. believe, <laughs> a big note. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Was there a letter on this one, Dan? No. no. I had originally recommended it. I was looking for it. <laughs> Review it, uh, but there's, there's really just some minor administrative cleanup tracks. As long as they, you know, the, the specifically with with uh, RC Cassidy from the Washington Sewage County said, after reviewing the Amatic subdivision, it's my opinion that the Washington County Sewage Council has no problems with the subdivision, as no testing is needed to require for both parcels or already served by existing systems. The only involvement of sewage council might be for visual inspection of the parent track. Again, no new sewage is being created by the subdivision or any testing is required. So we have a paper trail if, if anybody asks or can't see or whatever. Mm -hmm. There is the very tough note on it. So it's on file with it. Um, I, I would just I would just propose that <laughs> okay. Any other uh, questions? Concerns? Right. Motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Application 2023-0039, OMATIC, subdivision, plan number one. Um, contingent upon any administrative notes from Gateway for a, for KLH engineers. I'll second the motion. Okay, we have a motion to approve and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Okay, Dave's abstaining. Motion carries. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, application 2023-0040, Muse Elementary School Playground 
site plan. I believe that's uh, carried. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't even see these. So, um, Liz took care of these. What do you need up here? Uh, what, whatever they want. If you would do the right there, yeah, right. yeah that's fine right there. Um, good evening, Jordan Mayor with Canamax School District. Um, so, pretty straightforward. I had a playground area to Muse Elementary. Um, unfortunately, we underestimated how much play area we would need when we built the building. Um, so, we're actually designing, it's more designed towards the K to 2 age group. We're going to have a new playground area just specifically for that age group. Um, and it's going to be just shy of 10,000, or uh, yeah, 10,000 square feet. Uh, turf slash rubber playground area. Um, stormwater management uh, was a discussion. Uh, we actually had a parking surface designated for the original Muse build that was not included in the construction. Um, so we redid a study. Uh, we, we do have the stormwater management uh, capabilities as is. Um, we did provide a response today to Dan on all his comments. I'm not sure if you had a chance to review them yet. Probably not, it's just, th just this morning. Um, but again, we did, we did provide a response, so uh, pretty straightforward here tonight, but any questions you have, I'll be happy to answer. So is there, is there a fence proposed around all this? We are gonna do a fence around um, with two exit gates, and that's all ADA. Facts. So is this the fence you proposed? Yes. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, the fence still has to get a separate permit to build on the fence. Yeah, I, I'm not sure she addressed that with them yet. I'll make sure she, so it's not germane to the site plan. Honestly, Dan, this, this is another one to her. I, I have to do some research on this. Right. I apologize if this is off topic, but isn't Muse the one that uh, there's going to be a site connector to the trail, or is, this, is it a different elementary school that I'm not remembering? That's, that's the building of our trail. Okay. Trail, right? Yeah, it's been discussed. I, I think it, yeah, and it could come in there anywhere along that line. My only concern was just the security of the playground, like how. Well, that area, so the playground's behind it. So. All that area is already blocked off. Um, so if you go up there now, we, we had the intention of having a play area uh, that we undershot, that's why we're building now. But if you go there now, the back parking lot is partitioned off. So cars or vehicles, nobody can get behind there. Uh, and we're actually using that as a play area during the school days now. Um, but, and then furthermore, behind the building are each fenced off on the sides. And then we're adding the additional fencing for the new playground area as well. Yeah, I'm just I'm thinking about um, how sometimes young and older people make poor choices, and yeah, no, yeah, I no. want I want to protect any investment that the school district. Has. Yeah, so uh, it, there are gates, big swing gates that block off the entire parking lot area to the back building. Okay. And then furthermore, man gates or fences that go behind the building, which is where this would be. So, I'd almost like to see it at the other end of the field so the kids never have to cross the parking lot. You know, they come down yeah, the so end the, of the building. Right, the playground is behind the actual building. Right. And so the, the, the entire building is in front, um, and there's no car access back to that area. <clears throat> Except for like morning drop off, evening pick up, right? Well, they can go back, but the, the playground's actually behind that set of building there. Right, right. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, the kids are going to cross the parking lot to get there, but it's not open to the public during school hours. Correct. Well, from the school, that will just exit through the back, so they won't go through the parking lot for the use of the uh, playground. No, I'm confused. How would a, how they would go a person back responder... Right. Uh, so we have a man. I can't tell you the street in that name right now. 
So there is a avenue in the back. That gate is always locked 100% of the time. We never open it. It's only for the use of first responders or, or scenario in that issue. Yeah, we put, we required them to put secondary egress in for, uh, to maintain the construction access as a secondary means of access and egress to the property. But I think when you come around the building, as soon as you come around the building past, correct me if I'm, I just want to make sure I'm understanding this right. So you come up the, up the drive, don't turn in to the front. You continue up around the, the, um, the cafeteria. Correct. And it's going to be behind the cafeteria, but the kids will have to cross that like area. Oh right? yeah, 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 yeah. That's I what understand. I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, there, so. there's going to be, a, um, they have to cross that back parking lot to get Correct. to get into the play area. To get yes. into the play area. Yes. Right. But for emergency vehicle access, it's adjacent to the parking lot. Well, the emergency vehicle access for that would come straight up the hill, just as you explained, around the cafeteria. For the existing playground, we have a uh, emergency avenue that's to the right side of the building that they go back to that area. Yeah. Aerial view of that on GIS help understand it a little bit better. Yeah, you want to see it? Yeah. That's probably the only thing that, I mean, as an as an overall that, as a as a citizen, um, as a parent, that that I'm not crazy about the fact that it wasn't planned out so that there wouldn't be a need for the kids to have to cross parking lot to get to the play area that it's not directly adjacent to the building like the original play area well that was. that field area that we're building on now was designed as a play area uh it just with the weather it turns into a mud field uh we get less use out of it as an all-natural kind of flat field than if it was an artificial surface um so it was always designed to be a recess area it was just not as beneficial as we expected um, so now we're looking at the improvements to make that more useful to the students. So if you can see, so this is our current playground area here. And then this is our proposed site here. So yes, we'll come out here and walk across to this site here. I, I think your proposed site's up on top. top. The top part of that field. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we would exit and come across. Um, and then we discussed the first responder entrance here. So that's the, the existing, so we won't need a new first responder access to come up over the hill. And as far as the trail, to your, to your question about future mm -hmm. plans, yeah, Christy, um, on the back side of where they're looking to put this play area, it's really steep. So yeah. they wouldn't be bringing the trail down next to the playground area. It, it would this probably, area. It would probably come down more over on the other, the, the top of the picture. So okay. closer to School Street? Yeah, over on that, that pylon right, right away would probably be the better okay. access point for that future trail that they're talking about. Okay. Just from walking up. Yeah. I wasn't sure, so I had to ask. My, my concern, my concern with the stormwater uh, with the trail, we had never seen an asphalt in the old house in the past. Kind of people were that kind of stuff happened. Why that happened? Who knows? So they did do an analysis with the oversight. to our letter I have no reason to believe that they haven't addressed the comments so if, if you wanted to 
consider this than I used to just make it based upon them uh, verification of, of them addressing all the comments in my uh, December 20th letter. Any more questions? Comments? No. Motion? I'll make a motion we approve application 2023-0040, the Muse Elementary School Playground Site Plan, contingent upon addressing the items in the Gateway Engineer's letter dated December 20th, 2023. I'll second the motion. We have a motion to approve and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you for time. Thanks, Jared. Have a good one. Okay, next item on the agenda application 2023 0041 level up subdivision. Subdivision plan up? Busy man tonight, Carrie. Yeah. They weren't able to purchase that because the last I heard they were going to, he's going to try. He wasn't able to purchase that, that property. Last I heard, I heard when I uh, spoke with the uh, pickleball guy, he was going to try to buy that lot. Correct, yeah. Okay, he wasn't able to get it? I, I got the level of subdividing in there. Okay. Yep. So it's going to be subdivided into either a kitchen kit or a used parcel? Or no, we, he wanted to initially buy the whole thing. The warehouse building that is there, <coughs> That's they, it. Have, um, they don't even actually have any employees. Um, they bring stuff in in a trailer truck. Um, they unload it. They repackage it. And then it goes out. And then if there's no trucks, then there's nobody working. It's, it's like a family situation, I guess. I'm not exactly sure, but. Okay, well, it's not going to be a subdivision. Correct. Right. Um, they, they have addressed the comments. has provided a response letter um, and then appears that he's addressed that comment. Um, I, I would just, if you wanted to consider the subdivision separately, it should be since it's an application. I would just make it contingent upon addressing that December 18th letter. Comments? Motion? I move to approve application number 2023-0041, level up subdivision, contingent upon satisfaction of the items outlined in Gateway Engineer's letter dated December 18th, 2023. I'll second that. 
I have a motion to approve and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Okay. Davis abstained. Motion carries. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you. Uh, you ready to go again? Yeah. All right. 202342 level up conditional use. I wanted to bring the site plan up. Gave me letters December 20th on this one. It's doing that. So this is that the property that we just looked at here is the <coughs> existing warehouse building. So that's the L block. That's the proposed building. Parking still going up. We're willing to, to do a complete full full set of site plans. I mean, this was done for to meet the conditional use application requirements. Gary, where's uh, Georgetown Road and where's uh, Mayview Road? Uh, um, Mayview here. Mm -hmm. Which time they have Mayview there? I, I thought it was on the other side of the road. Yeah, uh, I'm. <laughs> Something. Maybe. Yeah, that's maybe that's Georgetown. So it's in that corner. So this is Georgetown Road, maybe it's going to be It's across from Hills Henderson. From Hills Henderson. Okay, yeah, yeah. so here's here's a better parcel map. This is this is the intersection of Mayview and Georgetown right here. Parcel outlined in red is the parcel in question that they're going to use. And then I, I just was looking, just making sure um, the requirements. Well, well, let's just start off. I mean, in, indoor recreation is a is a conditional use in the I one zoning district. That's why they're here for conditional use tonight. And we already have, and we have our indoor recreational facility right here already. There's one right at this corner right there. And right opposite, right over here as well. Bianco. Um, Bianco baseball is right over there too. Oh yeah, Bianco's. Yeah, Bianco's up, I believe. Bianco, Sky Bianco's up Springfield right, right, right around right here. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yep. We're going to do it. So uh, my, my only concern was in terms of the setbacks, uh, this particular area, when you're industrial, if you have an industrial if you have a residential use or a residentially uh, zoned property adjacent to your setbacks are different. Uh, my opinion is that this is all zone industrial, so that's not the issue. There is a residential property, believe it or not, the Delavade Farm comes all the way around here and circles around. So technically, uh, you, could, you could say this is a residential use here, but in actuality, they use part of the horse farm is actually a commercial, it's like a riding stable here. Mm -hmm. So I believe that it's being used commercially, so it's not a total, just like a residential property. It's not like there's a house sitting right here next to the property. So that was the reason I made this little map. But they're required as a part of the conditional use application to give, a, give the information. So. Within my typical letter, I just run down through the application. Um, 
they are, they're required to give us a vicinity map. They still need to do that. That's not a big deal. Uh, they still need to show all the setbacks on the plan uh, that would be proposed with the building. Uh, they've given us elevations and contours. Uh, they've given us the layout of the property, which is fine. Location of the parking areas. And it appears, Carrie, that you have plenty of parking. Yes. Yeah. There would be, um, let me get back to his, make sure we're on the right side of this one. Wrong side of it. So he has the parking here established. And there's, one space per 500 square feet of gross, uh, gross area, the facility of about 48,000 square feet, 96 parking spaces are required. They have 125 shown. They need to show their ADA spaces on here too. Um, they've given us a list of all property owners within 300 feet. And uh, they note, uh, They've submitted that. Those people will have to be notified. You, I think, don't, who does the notification? Okay. So if a conditional use happens, she'll send out the notification of that. Uh, giving us the application. And we still need a narrative statement, carry of what's going on here. We don't have a narrative statement. Uh, just on general comments, um, the existing conditions plan and this you know the, there's some housekeeping that needs to be done on that but I just question if, if you look at the storm look water. at the other parcel yeah, the yellow mark on that I think um, there's a stormwater management facility that's located back here mm -hmm. that's going to go away now right Correct. so with your plan are you guys confident that you'll be able to get this all to drain and you'll have sufficient, it's a big building yeah. to add to here, all this parking. So you're almost totally impervious and you have this, these little baby rain gardens. Mm -hmm. They don't look big enough. Oh, no, 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 they'll be underground. Um, area for underground stormwater storage. Okay. And you can you can definitely get all the impervious coming that way. I mean, yeah, that's more or less like final, final, final. I mean, does it grade all in yes, that general yes, direction? Yes. That's all I'm asking. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And um, I think I think that's that's pretty much my comments. Other than you know, I, I just want to address those couple things. I know conditional use requires the 300 foot notification that Liz will do, but have you met with the school district or talked with the school district at all? Um, just, I'm just thinking about traffic um, and the impact and. I believe we have talked to them. Okay. Um, we, the vice president of the Pickleball Association, mm -hmm. um, and they're real involved with community. I mean, they do that in community magazine. Mm -hmm. But the access to the parcel will change. So it's going to require a new highway occupancy permit. Okay. Uh, this is a state road. Have you guys had any discussions with the state about mm -hmm. what, are the, what do they say? You're going to have to submit a traffic study? Well, um, I talked to Mr. Garfield. Um, left him another voicemail and said it was regarding that about exactly what we're going to. Well, my, my recommendation would be not to uh, get to the get to the public. Get to, you'd have to have something prepared for the mm -hmm. for the hearing because the board, the people once the people are notified, everybody's going to come in and screen traffic. So, do you know the hours of operation of this place? Are they, you know, like are they different than 
the hours of operation for the school? Or yeah. is this like, a, do you know if this is going to be like a eight to eight in the morning to eight at night operation or anything? Yeah, definitely. Wayne has all that stuff. He didn't want to come tonight. Honestly, I told him not to come because I, I knew this wasn't the conditional use hearing. What do you think? These people are important. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, they make Karen. the recommendations. I, I understand. That. All right. Well, they can help you ferret out the issues before you right. get to the supervisors. Yeah, I think that's going to be the main, the big one. Yeah. I mean, you can table it tonight and ask them to come back with more traffic information, too. I mean, I don't, I'm not trying to slow it down, but. Yeah, but, you know, obviously you, you can't just grant approval without the highway permit. Yeah, but, but, but the problem is that, I, I mean, that PennDOT doesn't necessarily think of the same issues that, that the township thinks of, you know. Right? right? I mean, they're, they're, they're not worried about, to, I mean, they're, they do have, they have a portion of Georgetown Road, right? This is state going in this direction, but this portion of Georgetown is ours. Mm -hmm. I believe. Or no, Baker's ours, a pass through. Yeah, I think all of Georgetown is state. Yeah, all of Georgetown is state. Yeah, Baker goes township. It gets, this it gets really busy. At, it gets really busy at uh, Mayview and in Georgetown certain times of the day. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we're starting to get. Yeah, I mean, traffic counts to a point where I think, there. yeah, okay. light's going to become a necessity mm -hmm. sooner rather than later. You wonder which which uh, development's going to be the one to, to start to break the camel's back. I just think between Menard and Sky Zone and the elementary school, the daycare there, there's also other facilities going up. That's why I'm thinking about traffic and timing and, and all of that. And I think while it's not necessarily a part of the conditional use application or um, the hearing, I can easily, easily see that being a condition um, to be requested. And so I think it's, it's worth thinking yeah. about discussing having a, a solid plan in place and making sure that the communication has happened, particularly with Hills Henderson. Um, yeah, I mean, you have to get some counts out there and somebody understand how this place is going to operate, to see what kind of impact it would have on the peak hours. As a neighbor, you know, that's, that's my thoughts. But you could, if you, if you can gauge a traffic guy, you could talk to Haberman in our office and he can help you scope it. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm picturing 125 spots and how long is someone going to come in and play pickleball for an hour or two? So you're essentially just going to have cars coming and going all day long. The doctor's office. Yeah. Well, the, the biggest reason for the, for the number of parking spaces is for weekend events that they have, the, the tournaments, which aren't held during the day, you know what I mean, during the, the weekday, um, they're held on the weekend. Um, and that's, 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 that's why the hours of operation, I mean, they right. could, you know, the, the, you could mm -hmm. come in and you know, the planning commission could recommend reasonable conditions, which might be hours of operation based upon that. So okay. it'd be good to get him to. Yeah, he's just looking to you know, get the ball rolling on this. Yeah. You know, and he's under a lot of time constraints with what he's agreed to do. Cool. And, and no variance. What happens when the fad goes away, you know? You know? Getting the property and, and, <laughs> and moving forward. So the existing warehouse their driveway is separate from this driveway. It's going to be a um, combined, right? It's going to be yeah. combined. Right? It's going to be combined. Yeah, because yeah, right there. now they have that gravel driveway that comes up in the side. Huh? The existing driveway is right here. Yeah. Right. And it's proposed to be moved to here. And that seems to be a better location because this is what the school entrance here? Yep. Yeah, it's not quite totally plus, but it's pretty close. It is a little bit off center, Kara. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, Pendot will get you on that one. You know, the way they're talking to you about to skew. That is an entrance only um, point for the, for the school. It's entrance only off that point and exit 
further down. So, so that might actually help. How soon would the would the uh, the hearing be if approved tonight, January? Well, typically the board would they could go to the board meeting in January and there could be a motion to set the public hearing. So the public hearing would probably be at the next meeting, which would be like February. Okay. To, to do it. Within so. 45 days of approval with two week notice. Isn't that normally it? Like doing uh, it to for a commission hearing? hearing. No, to have the hearing. Submission of application. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I'm a little fuzzy. Yeah, I'm not sure what the, what the, the required time is for the hearing, but right, there, there would be a, a requirement to, to set it up within a certain time period. Twenty twenty four. January. Yeah. Planning commission to get it in February, then we're into March. Mm -hmm. Well, and then we see the site plan in March, I would think. Right after the conditional use hearing, yeah, if it was conditional use was received, it would come right. back here for the site plan. Okay, Any does the subdivision need to be approved first? We just did, we already did, yeah, we did. You did. Oh, okay, but by the <clears throat> they could run concurrently, yeah. Yeah, we're good on that. Yeah, because they can approve the subdivision in January and then immediately take up the conditional use. I mean, you you could recommend to move it on tonight with a with a motion that that they provide a, a traffic study and be prepared to present that at the public hearing. recommendation I mean it's again it's not a requirement of the conditional use but I think it's going to be if they want the conditional use considered they're going to need it and then they're going to come back to anyway for site plan and at that time that's when the traffic study is actually in the in the unified development ordinance you could ask for it then they're going to need it anyhow yeah, we're going to I think just to be prepared, Kerry, if you were prepared to talk about hours of operation and expected use during the day versus, you know, normal right. use during the week versus when there's tournaments. Right, yeah. Well, I said, I know the tournaments are a weekend, weekend tournaments, is that idea. Um, but we can definitely put that in the schedule, and the owner would be here to present that information, you know, on hours and people and so forth. <clears throat> I don't have any other questions. No, I'm good. Anybody else? Motion? I'll make it a motion to approve application 2023-0042, level up conditional use for level up pickleball, um, contingent upon uh, or with recommendation that hours of operation and uh, intended usage during weekdays and weekends is clarified along with the traffic study of the area. I'll second the motion. Okay, we have a motion to approve in a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Gary. Carrie. Abstained. Motion carries. Mr. Kreider, are you done presenting for the evening? Um, yes. Okay. I'm going to get traffic counts. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Mine has um, liquid IV in it. <laughs> 
No, the like the hydration supplement. I don't I don't think yeah. the electrolytes will be <laughs> <laughs> You as well, Mr. Kreider. No, I was in yeah, we're at everybody Cancun. Yeah. Well, I wasn't here either. Christy wasn't here? Oh, wait, you're right. Christy and Barbara weren't. Mm -hmm. See? I remember you were, you were real, real shy. One of the rumors to get. Just making sure, right? There's a lot going on here. Yes. A lot. I can I can give you a little description. Yeah, so, this? <laughs> um, Dan, can you do like a TED talk on this, or maybe like one of those sleep apps where you've repeated it so many times? Okay, sorry. I, what I wanted, to, the first thing I want to talk about is there was a request that came in from a few of the supervisors and, and Jack and I were asked to put it up for review with the uh, planning uh, commission is the fact that there's property over here along uh, along Interstate 79 and Morganza Road, more, uh, more commonly known as the Sabatino property. And so to orient everybody on this map, uh, this is Morganza Road, this is Maple Ridge, uh, what the townhouse development this is the property that Sabatino came in with originally with just kind of a grading plan. He, uh, he added in for an application that the application was finally rejected. So the, the board's concern is, and, and their driver on this property has been try to keep it all commercial and not residential, that being the property east, I'm sorry, west of Morganza Road. Sabatino on several parcels out of here. This is Traditions of America, which is, you've seen a lot of these plans. This is all approved. But there's other property that he owns. So at the time that he came in and uh, did this uh, interstate highway overlay, which we have on our zoning ordinance, that's what this checked line is. Mm -hmm. These were kind of the parcels that he either owned or had under control at that time. He obviously lost this one. Big one here in green is gone, uh, but he still does have several remaining parcels. Most importantly, he controls the piece along the interstate here. So again, uh, if, if you recall, and I, I think he came to the Planning Commission a couple of times with a plan that showed a residential development adjacent to Maple Ridge. Mm -hmm. And 
not that the board was necessarily against them doing residential here, but they felt that it was more appropriately all commercial and not mixed use in this particular area with its visibility to the highway and everything else that, that's going on. They didn't think it was appropriate to do residential here. So uh, in my discussions, I think very simply, um, uh, this can be addressed with This is the actual ordinance uh, for the Interstate Highway uh, Plan Development District, Section 917. So I think very simply, it, it talks about a lot of the same things. There's, there's nothing in here that needs to find, but I think, I think it's the board's desire to limit single family property uh, and, and be only permitted on the east side of Morganza Road. So I think we could very easily within here uh, uh, put some language in here such that uh, when we say uses uh, single family residential and land use category, this is only permitted on properties east of Morganza Road. So within the district that we have, it's defined by that checked area only to the east in the, in the written verbiage that we would change this. They're not against this, this uh, this particular ordinance just want to get, like I said, the residential portion out there. So there's this single family category, and then there's a, a combination residential category. Again, this being only permitted uh, on properties east of Morganza Road. So that's my description. Can I answer any questions? Dan, this isn't what I recall us discussing. La yeah, I think the last time I misinterpreted what I was told, it, I, I was told to get rid of the whole thing. Yeah, that's kind of... Yeah, in, in, in further discussions, <laughs> like, no, 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 we're not against the whole thing. We just want it to be commercial on that. So we just want it to be commercial, which I think I think the having it on the other side is good because this lends itself more to mixed use, almost like the way we're doing it with the MUC and the MUR. This is more business mixed use want to call it that yeah I, I I think part of the issue we had with with the last uh, plan that fell through over there I mean there was a, there's that large that tract of land there in between um, Maple Ridge and um, and Morganza where it just the top, the topography was is just not you know, doesn't doesn't lend itself to a lot for of access. yeah for access and whatnot. So it was kind of a, a narrow finger that kind of called a sac on them back there and gave gave no access. So uh, that's one of my concerns. If we're looking at commercial development between Morganza and and um, and I seventy nine is, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of barriers to being able to use that property for commercial use. Because I think the last discussion was the only access was like up through Lewicki Road, and it was right um, into like those phases there. Yeah, that, I mean, I was our. I think that was our biggest concern. I mean, everyone, please correct me if I'm wrong, but the, it, yeah, the, the he had one way in and one way out. Well, and the only other way, the only other ac potential access point was running out a long finger that kind of started to head towards Morganza that he had a residential plan on. So he was going to have to put a secondary, if he was going to put a secondary, second means of access or egress out of that whole development, it was going to be cutting through a residential plan. But I don't, rec but it was very narrow. So I don't know that there was any commercial use in there besides. Um, well, here, here'd be my point. If, if the problem is when you put in residential, then you have multiple families living back here 24 7 and when when he was using this property here adjacent to Maple Ridge he was taking away his ability to make and do whatever he needs to do to get a secondary access in I think if you remove the residential you leave it all commercial then if they have to put you know if they have to you know, put a tunnel in or or 
I'm being exaggerated, or, or a very steep cut and take a large area to do that, they could create an access, a secondary access. So my point is if you, if you take out the, his enticement to wanting to create residential right away, let's put a residential plan up here, you sort of force the hand that somebody's got to come in here and say I'm willing to spend the bucks to create a secondary access for commercial, and you have enough room to do it. I mean, his answer was, well, well, we just really can't do it because we have this residential plan. In here. Well, if you take away the residential plan, <laughs> you have more length to create a, 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 you know, a, a descending grade to come down and meet more Danza Road. It's a fair point. I think it was doable, but that was the concern, was that the, your secondary means of access and egress to the commercial development was going to be through a residential plan. So I, the point I think is well taken. I, I, but I think, I think, again, this is more of a zoning issue for the supervisors that they don't feel that it's appropriately zoned for residential in this side of, of, of Morganza Road, that it's, it's better served for, for what it was. And I don't think that, they, honestly, I don't think at least that they realized it until the first thing they come in with is a residential plan, of course. <laughs> so... I completely agree with what you're saying. My only concern with adding that, like only east of Morganza Road, uh, is how does that impact the rest of the township for zoning? Is it just for this area? Well, this area, here? this is the only area that's, that's okay. zoned this way. Okay, that's what yeah. I thought, but I was like, I just want to make sure. Yeah, they came in and wrote the ordinance specifically for the Sabatino property. Yeah. Years ago. I mean, really, if from a business perspective, if they want to do all commercial behind where Maple Ridge is, then it would be something similar to what has been done in South Fayette. And Maple Ridge would just be the residential area. They're just not the ones manning it. Correct. Yeah, good point. I'm good with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, cha that completely changed that discussion. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> I think being a, a resident of Maple Ridge, I abstain from this little piece of the discussion. Well, I, and if you want to abstain from the vote, I can under, understand. Or but, we'll vote. But, but I think yeah. your input as a representative of the people who live over there would be valuable to the discussion itself. Well, I know... I could tell you that there was a lot of concern that a lot of, of impact when people were concerned about even residential being behind them. And so that wouldn't even include all the things that would be involved with commercial, like um, lighting and noise and larger buildings and all that. That's why um, I think as far as objections from individual homeowners in Maple Ridge, there probably will be a good bit. Um, I'm, just, I'm just putting that out there just so, I, I don't know, but that's how, they, that's how it came off before when it was residential. When, when the, it was proposed residential. There. Yeah, I think the last plan put commercial development on two of the three sides of that property. Right, and, and then there I, was, this here was all residential. Right, and then the other two sides was commercial development yeah. right up against the property line. Yeah. Um, so I think you're gonna get questions on that anytime. Anytime you, you know, develop a, 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 a wooded parcel immediately adjacent to Residential, right, and you're and, get pushback. and the yeah, Sabatino just... group were very accommodating as far as like meetings to explain things. There were a couple of meetings, at least one or two, to explain to the residents what was being proposed and and um, different. Yeah, so there was communication there that they were trying to address any concerns. But I'm just pointing it out there that, um, you know, you, you do have, because of that area, that, you know, an, uh, a residential area, there probably will be a lot of questions about the commercial district. 
Well, they're, they're, it's already. They would still be required. The, the difference uh, would be that, I mean, there's a 150 foot setback that's required around the entire residential piece. So, a residential piece next to a commercial piece that's just like we talked about before requires a different type of a buffer. Yes, because. If it were residential next to residential, Doesn't there's matter. less of a, a setback than if there is commercial with, with right. residential. Yeah. And the existing zoning al allows either residential or commercial or a mix? Well, the, the, existing, the existing zoning around Maple Ridge is actually DPD. So it allows for commercial uses. The, the interstate highway mixed use was just really to a, almost like mimic South Point, that you could create a mixed use development in here. What the supervisors are saying is it, 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 that it, they don't want mixed use in here. They would prefer that this remain commercial. And the mixed use be to the other side of Morganza. Correct. Which goes back to, I think, the question I had last. Um, last month was, you know, with this mixed-use commercial, mixed-use residential, that it, once we get those issues ironed out, it might be time, it, it might be good to relook at everything um, east of Morganza and maybe rezone that MUC or MUR, yeah. as opposed to the overlay district. Eliminate the overlay district, which, and, and do something different with do it. Do something different with it that, that maybe is a little easier for everyone to digest. Sure. Um, but that's a further step. <laughs> so today, yeah, I'm fine with keeping the commercial on the other side of Morgan, so. Any, anybody else? Dave? Yeah, I guess that's fine. I see the gears turning. Yeah. <laughs> Just taking that residential component out of it. Right, right. Just because it's easier to develop as a commercial mm -hmm. parcel, why well, it's more enticing to be zoned differently. no rezoning involved there, Jack. This would just be a text change to the to the interstate overlay. highway plan. Yeah, yeah, so it wouldn't affect parcels at all. I understand. So the C1 and the BPD would still exist over there. The the overlay district would just lose its residential component on that side. Yeah, just as just in this in these couple areas that we talked about. Troy? Christy? I'd make a motion to. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I would make a motion to uh, accept the revision as proposed. So that revision would be? Uh, Adding uh, residential on the east of Morganza Road. Right. So, the, so modifying the existing interstate highway uh, district, overlay district, to reflect uh, only mixed use on the east side of Morganza Road. Correct. You got that, Dave? Most of it, yeah. Dan, you can help me tomorrow to clean yeah, this up? We'll, we'll fix it up. Okay, yeah. thank you. We got a second? I'll second that. All right, we got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Okay, Barbara abstains. Motion carries. Yeah, you're good. So um, the, the written information that I provided to you just to give the board, this was sort of an update that we gave at the October meeting, was um, in September uh, we were uh, asked to provide, there were some, some recommendations, uh, and this all happened. The Borney and Lewandowski properties were already uh, rezoned from 
uh, R1 to SD. The Fuchs Farm was rezoned from R1 to C1. Uh, the Koski property was, uh, was rezoned uh, to I1 and R3 from BPD. And then there were some general ordinance updates were approved. And uh, just to recap that that whole um, accessory dwelling unit uh, based upon the solicitor's advice was removed. So the uh, mother-in-law apartment or whatever mm -hmm. on the property, um, she just didn't feel given that some other decisions that were made regarding that kind of stuff that it was appropriate to include that at that time. So that's all been done. That was action in September. So in September, we also talked about the MUC and the MUR, and I provide an update here. Uh, the things that we did, uh, we added the assisted living definition, we added a, an apartment hotel definition, and I think this was based upon some of the comments that came from the Burns and Scallo gentlemen that, that came to our meeting at that time. Um, we added a definition of a major highway, uh, because if you recall, we did, uh, we were going to limit uh, some of the development to being located within uh, 2,000 feet of a major highway access point. Um, and a minimum of 20% of the land must be dedicated to non-commercial use if this option is selected. And we added a hospital and apartment hotel if along a state road. We added assisted living, nursing or convalescent, cell storage or veterinary hospitals, hospitals as, as a use by right in the MUC. And we removed the limit of the single family tenant in the MUC. If you recall, that was like 10,000, I'm sorry, 20,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. So we removed that. So. What you have, what you have attached, is the uh, current edited version with those edits made as a part of the ordinance. So these were all the things that were added, and I, I believe, Jason, I can't remember what what the, we wanted everybody's consensus related to some of this stuff. I think was the last. Yeah, there was, we left this. Uh, there was some um, discussion, I feel like, in the mixed-use residential, we had percentages of right. single-family uh, versus... Um, yeah, that was the biggest hang-up. What percentage do we set that at? Yeah, and I think we were okay with the... 20%. I think we were good with the on, the on the MUR side of it. It was the MUC side that we were struggling with where should that number be. And, and I think you were going to go back, Dan, I think you were going to come back to us uh, with some numbers from like up Cranberry or something, wasn't it? Yeah, we did. Yeah, that's the included spread, like little spreadsheet in here. I think it's page four when you go down where it has the setbacks, it's numbers. For a lot with setbacks. There was another one though. That's lovely. No, so. it was it was a percentage of it was a percentage of. Uh, there was like sixty or eighty. I can't remember which one it was. Hang on, I'll find it. Yeah, use regulations a. I'm sorry. Did you find it? Um, yeah, number five, use regulations. The residential mixed use district development shall provide a mixture of at least two. Last page. Okay, thank you. Sorry, we need to take page numbers on this. <laughs> I feel like it actually got shorter as we moved through the process, so. I think the font's smaller. <laughs> That's fair. The area permitted for single family uses shall be a minimum of 30% of the total development area. The area permitted for two family dwellings and or townhouses shall be limited to a maximum of 10% of the total development area. The area permitted for multifamily and garden apartment uses shall be limited to a maximum of 10% of the total development area. No more than six two-family townhouses or condo dwelling units shall be permitted in a single attached family group or row. Yada, yada, yada. 
Yeah, and that was you and uh, your associate, Dan, had, had That's right, yeah, brought Matt, those. Matt did some mm -hmm. checking on that. Yes. Well, that was the residential, and I think, yeah, that was the, that part I remember. We, I think we were okay there at the end of the last time we talked about it. It was the commercial mixed use. There was supposed to be some type of scale put on residential in that commercial mixed use, wasn't there? I think that was the types of facilities, the easements and the accessibility or how close they are to a highway. I think that's what limited it, not the percentages. Where it was like, oh, it has to be front facing, uses by right required to front state roads. That's that's where yeah. it was. It. It, it, it was, it's actually uh, under E commercial mixed use district. Um, Three uses by right. Um, C, single family dwelling. There's a VI right before it says apartment hotel is lined out. Um, it says a minimum of 20% of the land area of the development parcel shall be developed as a non residential use. I, I think what we were going for there was we wanted to make sure, because we had mixed use residential with mixed use commercial, and there was no cap on the residential makeup of the mixture within that right. mixed use commercial. So our concern, Dan and I had the shared concern that somebody might come in and just throw a whole residential yeah. development in to mix, in essentially develop as mixed use residential when we specifically zoned it as mixed use commercial. Mm -hmm. And so we were forcing them to put at least some commercial component into every development, every parcel development developed within that MUC. So they can't just come in and just extend MUR over an MUC. They have to put a commercial component yeah, the, in. The um, and when you said the land, we didn't actually, you know, it was the land. So if you had a hundred acres, twenty acres would have to be commercial. Right. But still, eighty acres is a big subdivision too. Right? Yeah, I, I'm still not sure if that's and the if right you're number. Using mixed, and if you're using a mix of Wellens, you know, if you were to put one apartment building in it, you know, it could take a, a big chunk of that. You know, it wouldn't take much acreage. So that's why I think we were comfortable on that. Yeah, I wasn't sure if we were still going to go a bit bigger than 20% required for um, commercial. It just is a minimum of 20%. So it has to be at least 20%. It doesn't mean that they will only do 20%. Right. Um, no, but it could end up. That's we're, we're trying to encourage commercial development and not more residential, not more burden on the on the uh, services provided by the township. Um, so, more. so I get a good example of this over in South Park, right at the end of the T line. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's a new development over there called um, Summit Station, and they put up like 200. Actually, ironically, Sabatino did it. <laughs> they put up like. 200 apartments, and they put a big Ryan single family townhouse development on it. Mm -hmm. But the township made them reserve one large track right mm -hmm. along Brownsville Road for commercial. And they've continued to market that. But even even like a, a town, that, you know, I don't know what South Park's population is, it's probably comparable to Cecil's, pretty close. It, it, you know, they, they have their own. Never on high school. I remember. I don't think I've ever heard of the population. But my point is that they've not been able to market that to a small grocery store because they're they're dying over there for a small grocery store. A lot of the things that we're seeing around here, and they're really struggling until you reach a certain point to get that. You know. But I think the idea of the MUC was to have more like services. Like I mean, maybe it's just a small shop area that has a restaurant in it. Might have a dry cleaner, you know, coffee you know, shop, a nail salon, or something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. That you have some of the services that are close to the development. I think that was, that's the way sort of the most of these uses are built into here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just asking of everyone yeah. here, because that was the percentage for, for the two of you. That was one of the big hangups last um, 
the last meeting was, you know, we kind of felt like we were all in the spot, like we got to pick a percentage. We're like, we can't. We need to sit back and think about this a little more. And and I, I just want, is everyone okay with 20% on that? I am. The only thing I'm trying to, to recall and to clear the cobwebs out for myself is um, the representative from Burns and Scallow had provided a very colorful red line, adding a lot of things. I do recall that, and I'm not. Yeah, we didn't agree with all those. Yeah, okay, and that's what I was making over, sure. We went over some yeah. of them, but we didn't. I mean, he had other. Crazy there was a lot of things that were in there that were. Yeah. I think I think we added the um, we added the assistant living facility mm -hmm. and some of the more. Yeah. Um, uses that weren't as intense. That was definitely a wish list. Okay, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't think they were in Assisted living but... facility, nursing, convalescent, rest home, the cell storage was added. These were the ones that are, they're kind of highlighted. Um, I think there was some And comment... then we added the apartment, hotel, Sorry. hospital, limited to 20 beds. So those that's kind of the highlight, Christy, of the... That's what I thought, but I, I was yeah. just wanting to make sure that I was remembering correctly. Actually, I think I made the comment when he said self-storage facility. I, I think my comment specifically was, oh, no, not another one. <laughs> um, you, you build a lot of residential, you end up with self-storage. Yeah, I know. The, um, there was some uh, feedback. I don't remember where was that. Somewhere on one of the Facebook pages. Um, where I think there was a lot of discussion um, people would watch the video and were, and were giving feedback on it. And I think they were talking about the language, the terminology for the different um, businesses. Dan, did any of that filter back to you at any point? Talking about, you know, like, you know, nurse and convalescent or rest home, is that is that like the, the actual terminology being used nowadays or... And I'm not sure that it's. I can tell you from my more recent experience that yes, those are all terms that are being used right now. Perfect. And assisted living is often uh, developed in adjacent yes. to those facilities. However, um, it doesn't have to be. And the traffic that will be going for assisted living versus a nursing convalescent or rest home is completely different. I don't think it would help be help for these percentages for the commercial. It would be helpful, I think, if we had some kind of visuals because I'm trying to visualize like any kind of commercial building or little strip mall or anything else is probably going to require a good bit more space than, say, groups of townhouses or something like that. So the 20% to me is a little nebulous, like I, it's hard for me to visualize what we're talking about there. Well, and I think that's something that we discussed before too, because you know, we're, we're putting these ideas together and, and you know, the, the five of us- and, No data. Yeah, and like, Dan, we, we all have our, these, these visions in our head of what does mixed use commercial mean? What does mixed use residential mean? What's it actually gonna look like when it's built? And the reality is that none of us know. A developer is going to come in and, and say, okay, here's the guidelines they gave me. Now what can I shoehorn in there, right? What can I make money? What can I put in there to make, to, to make me money? Because that's what they're, they're developers. They're, they, they're there to make money. So they're going to look at it and say, what can I put in there to, to make me money? And, and what they end up, what ends up being built may not be what we envision. And that's one of the things that, I wanted part of my just, process just, with this was to make sure that what look, we put down kind of made sure that it wasn't something completely different than what we're envisioning. Well, to, to Barb's point, so I'm, I'm involved in a project right now. So um, 7,500 square foot building can house three tenants within it. So um, that's the 7,500 square feet. So if you were we're calling that 20%. I'm, all I'm saying is that, that that's not very big. The parcels probably are right around an acre. 
So let's just envision if you had a 10 acre site that you just wanted to do some townhouses and a little commercial building, you could very easily do that on an acre of ground. You can make yourself a small little strip or one building or multiple. So I think the 20% is, it might be a little bit on the high side. I mean, you can make it smaller, but I, I think it gives enough flexibility again Remember, the goal is to provide the whole the whole reason for the MUC coming out of the, the comprehensive plan and what the supervisors thought should be for in the, in the, in the mixed use was to try to put more intense uses along the state roads, do less intense stuff off of the state roads. So most of this is going to be along the state roads anyway, for what the MUC when it finally gets zoned. And most of the MUR is going to be on township roads. And you have to, in two points above the 20%, uh, it ends with saying... I mean, it, it's, a, it's I, I think we looked at three different developments in terms of like that South Park one I talked about. Uh, we looked at the charter development in South Fayette, and then we might have looked at one other charter development that we're You don't know until you test the ordinance, until you come up with a piece of property. I mean, let's think about another scenario. If you had 100 acres and you had to reserve 20, the developer could pick a piece that's very steep topographically, reserve the 20 acres, and only develop a little piece of that 20 acres for commercial. But he's reserved that portion for commercial. So when you say 20% of the land area, it doesn't dictate the size of the building. And you let the market dictate that. All you're saying is you want to leave enough room to get something. I guess you make a good point. I, I mean, yeah, you could theoretically take a, and say, yeah, we designate this 20% for commercial, but it's a completely unusable 20% of the property. And, and, and they just backdoored the entire intent of good. the ordinance. Good upon this. And we give no maximum, right? It's only 20% minimum, and when that's you say it. 20% of the land area. Yeah. I mean, you could apply. Can we say usable land area? But, or does that become too. Then you have to define what is usable land area. You could add a definition for that. Is that a reasonable. Um, is, that, is that something more. You, you can create a definition more, for I mean, in Western Pennsylvania. If you have a 20 acre parcel, you're probably only able to use half of it. So that's 10 that's acres. That makes, that you know, changes. If you that. say usable, if you say 20% usable, then they probably have to have 40 acres to make it usable, <laughs> would be my point. So if you had a 100 acre tract, you said 20% usable, it would take 40 out of those acres to be commercial. Well, I think that'd be better. For, from our perspective, then having them come in and say, yeah, we're gonna put in this develop, we're gonna develop this 100 acres in the mixed use commercial and we're not gonna put any commercial component in because we designated the 20 acres that's completely useless. So to, to our point for what we're trying to accomplish, or at least what the Board of Supervisors are trying to accomplish, and that's trying to help them get there, I think maybe redefining that and not just saying total land area, but defining that more clearly to actually get us to where we want to be might be the way to go. But the way this is written, a minimum of 20% of the land area, that doesn't, that doesn't say that a specific part of it, it's just 20% of the land area as a whole. Correct. Right. So you could have a, you could have a 20 acre that, 20 acres that's, uh, a steep ravine that cuts through the property, and they're going to designate that as the. the but it's property. to be developed. That's part that's of the right. sentence yeah, there to be developed. Yes, I'm guessing twenty percent is pretty standard in Western PA. Twenty percent. Twenty percent commercial. Yeah. I in mean, in this type of district. Sure. I mean, so. So to your 
so everybody's point. So if I have a 10 acre parcel and um, I need to develop 20% of it, that's two acres, we'd probably get an acre usable out of that, which would be big enough to put, like I was just describing, like some small yeah, shops. 7, square shop. Yeah, you're 7,500 square foot. I think 20% is the number. Dan, I think you've nailed it. Uh, I'm not, <laughs> again, it, uh, until you test something, somebody yes. comes in with it, you really, mm -hmm. you really don't know. I mean, you can't force the market. I mean, the only thing that you can do is set it up that it could be used. If I, and, and all I know is it's more desirable now for communities to have, when you build bigger plans, to have some the local, local services yeah. available. Agreed. Okay. So this is encouraging that, and that is a good thing, and everything yes. about it is beautiful. Yeah, I'm, I'm rereading it back, uh, back, and I think that is in there. It says it must be developed mm -hmm. as a non-residential use, so so probably can't just say that it's 20 acres or 20 percent of useless property then, right? Right, because when it comes in for the, it says, "Show me your plan." Yeah, look at tonight. We're developing yeah. that twenty acres, mm -hmm. so they would grade it out. Like in the case of the South Park project, they graded it all out. It's a big flat pad ready for development. Yeah, it's got. So what you encourage them is when they're doing the overall development to prepare the pad, because everybody wants a pad ready site. It's you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So when they're looking at the twenty percent, it. it's it it's regardless of what areas are developed, easily developed or not. It's just 20% period, a minimum, shall be developed. Well, 20% got to be developed, which means that the non-developable portions are what's going to eat into the residential component. Yes. Right. So that's, I'm feeling but better. But, but in, that's it, I'm it, glad it, we it, talked about to it. To my point, and again, this is, this is, that's why I brought up the South Park thing. I keep going back to this is, they did all the residential, mm -hmm. and they've come back and said, hey, we'd like to put a couple more townhouses in the township. It's like, nope, can't. Got to reserve that for commercial development. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I feel better about it. I do. Are we ready to move it on to the supervisors? Mm -hmm. Yes. For a review? And I think so. Yes. To get hashed out and tore apart <laughs> again. I, I don't. I don't. You know, it's not a bad thing. No, no. Do we have a motion? Y'all looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve the draft MUR and MUC. Um, ordinance with the modifications listed as discussed and all items having been listed on the discussion page. Yeah, they're already in, in this draft. So yeah. we'll just accept the changes and send it to the supervisors that way. Yes, that. Okay. I'll, I'll second. Barbara, got it. Barbara has you can. Dave, it's okay. All right, we have a motion to approve and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Mm -hmm. Wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Uh, correspondence announcements. Any other discussion? Um, the the work in the, in the park looks like it's been coming along real nice. Uh, Jack and I were talking about it earlier this week. Um, hoping, hoping they're going to be wrapping up in the next um, few weeks, weather permitting. They're down, they're down to the uh, other end of the pool department now. So. The final pool. Yeah. And they can come in and they got all the rock out of there. And it's uh, still dead grass, but it's pretty uh, smart to get the rain. Yeah. Spring will do amazing things for that. Well, I think the people that have Still pay the price as far as you know, the, the mud in the long run. I think it should be a pond or some 
I think it's a great enhancement to the park and to the community in general. That's why I wanted to bring it up. The best part about it is we didn't have to pay for any of it. That too. And we get a credit for uh, our, our pollution control plan. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's a, yeah, for the PRP. So it's a big, that's a big savings. Wonderful. Yes, since we talked about the zoning map, has there been any communication at all with um, the uh, Sabatino or his property group? No, the last communi well, the last communication was a letter that the solicitor sent to them that said their their applications closed out. Mm -hmm. So they've not come back with anything. So we have no idea at this point what there's, there's just no pending, nothing. No pending applications. There's nothing. There's nothing on the, the township docket to deal with with oh. that development. Oh, I didn't hear that. What happened? Oh, yeah. I mean, he, he was upset when TLA came in because I think at one time he had the option to buy the TLA property and he didn't buy it. He, he never realized that somebody else would come in and get it. So. I know that you're understanding. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they do. Well, they, yeah, they. Sell it to somebody else. Yeah, with South Point, and we talked to the five. Oh, I don't know if you've heard that Comcast is staying. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we could entertain to have another one. I saw some people who were saying that they were going to have another one this year. Um, you know, they have 500 bills per year, and they have to have another one every year. Two different ones. Go back to Humber to come up with them for an hour. The market will come back. It's just going to take time. That's all. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. second. 847. <laughs> we have a motion and a second to adjourn. Adjourned. Merry Bye. Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Short and sweet. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> it could have been worse. Uh huh. What building are you in? We are in 401 Technology Way.